Hey guys, welcome back to Chugs with Chainsaw. Today we're looking at an actual chainsaw plugin, the Auto Audio Blown Out Wall. Awesome, right? Cheers to Auto Audio for sending this on over. I did ask for the Blown Out Wall to do a review on it. Basically, my signal chain is as follows. Just the Schecter into my interface and then going into the Blown Out Wall, going into the 1111, and then into some Auto Audio cabinets. This is, I believe, the uh, the Sun, uh, the Tower cabs, basically. Just a couple of those blended together. I have the wall bypassed right now, so you're just hearing kind of like a crunchy 1111 tone, just so it's not super distorted, just so you can hear what the plugin's doing. Cool. Yeah, it works. Now let's turn the wall back on. This is kind of like what you get default settings. Damn, that's like a riff right there. Yeah, so I've been just playing this thing pretty nonstop. It's, it's you know, by default, it's kind of nothing really special sounding. It's just a really kick-ass sounding HM2 plugin. But you've got all these tone shaping options. You've got filters for the low and the high, and you can adjust the cue to make them super narrow and gross and whistly and nasty. Or you can just blow the shit out of them and make them really fat and huge. And with the input and outputs, and the different uh, tube distortion and clipping options, you can basically kind of design your own fuzz or uh, obnoxious distortion sound. <laughs> well, I'm liking the way that sounds with this uh, 1111 and cab setup, so we're just gonna kind of go through these options here. Um, I would go through the presets, but uh, it's just honestly easier to show this and it's faster for me to do it this way. You know, you've got tone low and volume and then a cue here and you can crank a bunch of different things up here. Post frequency. Uh, let's just play with this post freck here. This is where that guh of the chainsaw comes from. That's where like that high, you know, the, the mid thing comes from. So if I lower this, it should get lower. It should sound a little bit more, uh, you know, Cocktois. That's the most nasty cocktois ever. Let's move that up a little bit. I mean, I've changed one control and we've already got a bunch of different variants of just where that little hump is in the mid-range, that like, you know, kind of gross uh, buzzsaw sound. Um, and now you can adjust the cue of this as well. Awesome. Now you have a low volume here, and that basically just, uh, in the HM2 circuits, generally speaking, there's kind of like a low push at like, oh, I don't know, 200-ish hertz, and there's just like a big hole in the sound, and then there's the, the mid-hump that we all know and love, and that's the, the signature sound, is that like that, the grinding, you know, anywhere from about 900 to 1200 hertz is pretty much where that lands. Um, 
But here you can turn down the low part and just get all the nasty. So, I mean, I'm not going to say this sounds like, ooh, if, you want, if you're a modern metal player, just take the low out and you can tighten it up. I mean, it still sounds disgusting, and that's the point. But you can at least shape it, or you can go the absolute opposite and just crank the crap out of the low end and get this thing. Awesome. Basically just the biggest mid-range fuzz ever. Um, let's put that to like somewhere reasonable. Okay. That's pretty good. And we've got post-Q and low-Q. We can just kind of change how wide or narrow the filter bands are, which is awesome. Again, really sculpting it. Okay, I'm going to turn the tube mix up. Now this is all the way up, and of course there's nothing there because I haven't turned the tube drive on yet. But let's turn up the tube drive slowly. So here's nothing. Cool, cool. We'll do like... nine. All the way up. You hear how like, just, ooh, that is like super overdriven, like just destroying the signal, just. And now we can control the actual distortion of the thing. So let's turn this way down, just to give you an idea. Yeah, here's that like kind of overdriven but also voltage starved sound that I was talking about. So that's cool if you want to have something a little bit different. I just love how like guttural that sounds. It's just huge. Um, okay, so we're gonna go more up on the distortion. Let's just peg it at 30, here we go. And you can hear it's really not gating almost at all now. See? Get to somewhere in the middle here. Do like 16. Tube volume. Let's crank down the tube volume all the way. And now we kind of just get like a weird like. Let's turn this up a little bit here so I can hear it. Kind of like a mid uh, thing, but it's it's really lowered the output of the plugin itself. So that's cool. Now let's turn the tube volume up even more. Yeah, that's like too much. Hang on. <laughs> make sure you just do little tweaks at a time. That'll make a lot of difference in your tone. Perfect. So I'm at about minus five, uh, about minus six. Okay, now we got like an input and output, 
and a couple different inputs and outputs and post and pre. Again, kind of like the 1111 plugin here. If you like your gain staging and you like options on what's being cranked up and what's been driven hard and what's not, you've got options. You have a couple different things here for the amp and the amp power. If you turn this other one on, it basically just gets really nasty. Just super, just broken, disgusting sputum. I mean, that's just brutal. It's like... You know, ironically enough, I said be careful, but we're going to go back up to that first section and crank those highs up again because, you know, I can't hear it with all the clipping and distortion. I wonder why. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and make it even worse. Let's put the tube mix back a little bit here. Okay, so I did a couple of tweaks here. I turned down the tone volume. I turned down the lows. I turned up the post cue just to, like, on the high end to really, and the, the post output. I turned up the high output as well just to really smash it and get, you know, let it cut through and still be able to get all the broken disgustingness from the tube and the clipping, but just, you can actually hear the buzz saw again. Okay, now let's try to get something kind of different. So we're gonna go for more of a fuzzed out sound, but without all the high mid-range nonsense. Now we can get something that's not quite as uh, mid-heavy and like chainsaw-y. We can go more into the fuzz and just disgusting, you know, a billion dB plus of gain of distortion sounds. these filters man if you modulate these again in reaper or in some other program where it can do like a sign you know a pulse or a like a sine wave going back and forth you can get all sorts of nasty uh like new metal and uh experimental noisy type of textures and then just put a crap load of reverb on it and you've got like the coolest weird ambient metal sound ever <laughs> Adjusted some of the cue, 
just to make it like more piercing, but still have just overblown gross ass fuzz. And here you go. Yeah, maybe that's too much low. Yeah, that's like, hang on. <laughs> changing the high pass and low pass. Yeah, if it's too hot, like if it's just like crazy pegged inputs and stuff, it actually doesn't stop when you stop playing. Like I just turned down my volume, like. And of course you can change the, you know, the, the, the frequencies of all that. But now we've got a completely different sound. Now we've got like kind of this fuzzed out, um, semi-gated type of thing. And if it's still too kind of like muddy and you just want a fast way to cut lows, just use the high pass and low pass. Use the, the high pass to uh, cut all the lows out. Sometimes it's a little bit sputtery. If you're having some gating problems, turn up your distortion circuit. It's probably the fastest way to do that. And then um, kind of turn down the input level to compensate for that. Okay, we're still having some, some gating, so we just turn it up a little bit more. I'm not really playing like Swedish style riffs, but you know what? That's okay, because we're not really Swedish sounding anymore. Um, this thing is fun. I mean, basically, if you just like making aggressive, noisy ass, like fuzzed out, gross, distorted sound for your guitar or bass, this is absolutely worth doing a trial at least. Check it out. Give it a spin. If you can deal with the iLock thing, which uh, I'm finding kind of that hard to deal with these days, but whatever. Um, as far as the plug-in itself, the quality itself, Pretty awesome. See, I turned the input way down. So now I have to super pick to get it to do anything. But if I peg the input,
I'm going to show you what you can do if you use something like a way to modulate the filter cutoff. I've mapped a simple sine wave modulator to the post frequency. And you basically have a cool ass phaser now. Well, that's cute, but you can do other stuff too, like a saw. And now we have like a kya 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 kya, like a really nasty just. And you can do it even crazy, like... So that's like super fun. Um, I was gonna plug my bass in, but I mean, you get the point. Basically, just, you know. You can get the big nasty power chords. If you like the HM2 pedals, if you like the Boss HM2 sound, the, the you know the Swedish death metal thing, um, and you want a plugin that pretty much does whatever you want in that realm, it's not going to sound clean and happy, and you're not going to get like an overdrive signal out of this. Like yeah, you could kind of do that if you want, but it really isn't supposed to do that. If you just want to make a bunch of noise or have textures in your distortion, which I'm all about that, I'm all about having the, you know, different kinds of options, um, then absolutely go grab this. Check it out at least, do the trial thingy. Um, it is iLock. I really hope at some point that we can kind of, you know, get away from the iLock thing. And I'm not just talking to one company, I'm talking to the world. You know, tube clipping, solid state clipping, it's all in there. Uh, and if you use it in front of like a really distorted amp, if I peg the gain on the 1111 and crank my lows all the way up, we basically just get destruction.
if you like that, definitely worth checking it out. That'll do it for me. Uh, have a good uh, rest of the year, and I'll see you guys in the next one.